Welcome to Lesson 3C, Physical Explanation of Choked Flow. In this lesson, we'll discuss pressure waves and Doppler shifting as a way to help us explain choke flow in a nozzle. In the process, I'll define Mach angle and the so-called zone of silence. I'll briefly introduce oblique shocks and sonic booms also. Let's do a thought experiment where we have a small pressure disturbance, or noise, at some point in a uniform flow of air. Sound disturbances are pressure fluctuations which will assume occur at a point and then they spread out in all directions at the speed of sound. This would be the case with no flow. If the air is flowing at some speed v but the source is fixed in space, these sound waves or pressure waves move at speed a relative to the local wind velocity. We'll examine four cases as v keeps increasing. Case A is when V equals zero. In other words, there's no flow. In terms of Mach number, M equals zero. In all these diagrams, this represents a microphone, and this represents our sound source. Since there's no wind, we have the case as sketched here, where the sound waves spread evenly in all directions and move at the speed of sound. This is true in any direction. S is the distance from the sound source to the microphone, so the microphone hears or senses the sound after time delta t equal distance s over speed a. That's how long it takes for the sound wave to move from here to here. The frequency of the sound waves is unchanged. So this is kind of the trivial case. Now consider case b where v is between 0 and a. In other words, it's subsonic with m less than 1. The air is flowing from left to right at some subsonic speed. Well, the source still puts out sound waves, but now they're moving downstream as they spread. They still move at speed A perpendicular to the wind, but to the right, from a fixed reference frame, the speed is V plus A. And to the left, since these sound waves are fighting the wind, the actual speed from a fixed reference frame is A minus V. Since these waves move slower than A, it'll take a longer time to reach the microphone. The microphone hears the sound at delta T equal S over the speed A minus V. This is a longer time than it was for the no-flow case. What about the frequency? Well, it stays unchanged, since even though these waves are farther apart here, they're moving faster, and they're closer together here, but they're moving slower. So since the microphone and the sound source are both stationary, the microphone hears the correct frequency even though there's a wind. I'll digress a little bit here to talk about Doppler shifting, something that you're probably more familiar with. Consider a case where a car or some object is producing a sound, but this sound is moving at some speed that's less than the speed of sound. In that case, the sound waves in front get crunched and the sound waves behind get spread apart. So if our microphone is here, as the car approaches, it senses a higher frequency. But a microphone back here, after the car has gone past, experiences a lower frequency. This is the phenomenon called Doppler shifting, as I illustrate here. Now let's consider the case where V is exactly equal to A. In terms of Mach number, Mach number is 1. The sound source is still putting out sound at speed A, but it's fighting against an equal speed V, pushing it to the right. So the sound waves, as soon as they're formed, they get swept downstream like this, with speed A plus V here to the right, and speed A minus V here, or 0, since V equal A. If I keep drawing these circles, they will all be tangent to this vertical line at the source. The microphone hears the sound at delta t equal s over a minus v like previously, but this is s over a minus a, or zero, which gives us infinity. In other words, the microphone never hears the sound. The sound waves are swept downstream as fast as they're created. 
so the pressure disturbances from this sound wave never get to the microphone. This case is analogous to our choked converging nozzle of the previous lessons, namely flow from a large tank through a converging nozzle for the case where PB is exactly equal to P star and the flow is coming out sonically V equal A. If we put some source of sound here, the sound will travel downstream just like we had sketched here, but it can't travel to the left upstream. That's why we call this the sonic or critical conditions and the flow in here is choked, meaning that any disturbances down here can't affect the flow. I'll write this out as follows. Any noise or pressure disturbance downstream of the sonic or choked exit plane does not, I can say cannot, affect the flow upstream of the exit plane. That's why we have choked flow. And I'll make a small caveat here. As long as PB back pressure stays less than or equal to P star, and we're assuming constant P naught in this case. As we keep increasing the airspeed, consider the case where V is greater than A. In other words, Mach number is greater than 1 or supersonic. Now this V is bigger than A, so as we create a sound wave, it gets swept down before it even has a chance to move upstream, and our pressure waves look something like this. We can draw a tangent to these circles and say again that these waves move at V plus A downstream, but you can think of them as moving in a negative direction to the left. They're always swept downstream faster than they can be generated. Again, the microphone never hears this sound. In fact, any microphone to the left of the diagonal lines, these purple lines that I drew here, never hears the sound. If I put my microphone here, for example, this sound is never heard by this microphone. Let's label this angle with respect to the horizontal as mu, where mu is called the Mach angle. It depends on Mach number. In fact, it turns out that mu is the arc sine, or sine to the negative 1, of 1 over m. The bigger the Mach number, the smaller the mu. In other words, these lines are more swept back as Mach number increases. For example, when m equal 2, mu equal the arc sine of one half, which is 30 degrees. At Mach number one, mu equal sine negative one of one, which is 90 degrees. In other words, these diagonal Mach lines would spread out until they're vertical instead of at some angle. For Mach number two, that angle is 30 degrees, and for Mach number one, it's 90 degrees. Any microphone to the left of this dashed line top or bottom, anywhere in this zone, cannot hear the sound. Now I'll attempt to sketch this three-dimensionally. Here's our airspeed, our sound source, and I'll draw a cone at Mach angle mu, trying to look three-dimensional. This cone is called a Mach cone, and mu represents the angle from the horizontal to the Mach line. Any point to the left of this Mach cone is called the zone of silence because you can't hear this sound source unless you're inside the Mach cone. Again, mu goes down as Mach number increases, making this a tighter and tighter cone. Dude, is that the same as like a sonic boom, man? Well, not exactly, Joe, but they are related. If this were not a sound source, but a supersonic jet, for example, you would have something similar to a Mach wave but we call it an oblique shock. I'll re-sketch this for that case. If this is our supersonic jet in a reference frame moving with the jet so that air is coming at it, the Mach waves would spread out at some angle mu as discussed above. But these are just very small pressure disturbances, namely sound. The actual jet produces what are known as oblique shocks and they're at a bigger angle, beta. These are called oblique shocks because they're at an angle. We'll also talk about normal shocks later in the course, which would be straight up and down, perpendicular to the flow. It is this oblique shock that causes a sonic boom, since it turns out that across the shock, the pressure rises suddenly. Call P1 the pressure before the shock, 
and P2 after the shock. P2 is much higher than P1. It's that sudden change of pressure that you hear as a sonic boom. If the jet's going real fast, the pressure increase can be quite large. We'll talk in much more detail about both normal shocks and oblique shocks later on in the course. Finally, if any of you have been to an air show and a supersonic jet goes by at Mach number greater than one or supersonic, I'll explain what happens at three different times. Here's the ground, here's the jet, and now we're in a fixed reference frame with the airplane moving to the left at a speed greater than the speed of sound, generating oblique shocks at its nose. And as I said, this oblique shock will have some angle beta. Now imagine a person standing here, minding his own business. He sees the jet, and he says, wow, that's a quiet jet. That's because he's in the zone of silence and doesn't hear any of the noise caused by the jet here. Now consider time two, where the jet has moved, so I'll grab this and move it forward. Compared to the first case, the jet is just about on top of this guy, but he still doesn't hear it. He still says that's a quiet jet. At time t3, let's suppose that this jet has moved past the person. Now he's not going to say that's a quiet jet. Instead, he's going to say that's a loud jet. As soon as this oblique shock passes him, he's out of the zone of silence and into the zone of noise. A sudden pressure jump is the sonic boom, but there's also noise from the jet engines and the turbulence and the jet itself hitting his ears. Thanks, dude. And I'll end this with some short video clips from air shows. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.